Hello everyone. Today we're talking about record linkage and how it helps researchers dealing with big data. A big thanks to Grigoris Papastolu who suggested this video and supports me with caffeine. But back to the video. First of all, what is record linkage? It is the amalgamation of data about the same object from different databases. Sometimes it will come across the term data matching, which basically describes the same thing. The goal of record linkage is the establishment of a microdata set. Microdata are information at the individual level. Record linkage can also be applied to only one database to remove duplicates and thus increase data quality. With record linkage, we are dealing with very big data, such as census data that often encompass the whole population. There is a lot of information about subgroups who are often hard to reach using surveys. This is why researchers in some fields like using them. Others are more skeptical, for example Paul Orm says in this article, data can be either useful or perfectly anonymous, but never both. That is also the main problem with big data as your source. The data is there, there is however not enough information to actually draw conclusions from them. There is, for example, little information about demographics, such as income, education, marital status, vocation and so on. So you need to link it with other databases in order to draw meaningful conclusions. Usually we are dealing with data sets that do not have a person identification number and we only have quasi-identifiers. Quasi-identifiers, as we've seen in previous videos, for example about k-anonymity, are data points that do not directly identify someone, such as date of birth or zip code. But also, if we're dealing with like millions of data, it's also the name of the individual. You might be wondering why I cannot just use the name of the dataset if I already have it. First of all, names are notoriously often misspelled. If you, if you tell me your name is Kane, I might write something different, like with a C or a K. Same with first name, it's Kristen or Kristen. To account for these fuzzy values, record linkage has solutions. So let's look at the record linkage process. This graphic outlines the general record linkage process. You have two databases, A and B. Pre-processing consists mainly of finding a unified way to write, for example, names. If you have umlauts or other weird characters, you need to code them uniformly across both databases. Next up is indexing, which is used to speed up the comparison process by reducing the number of comparisons. After this step, only pairs that are likely matches remain. These are called candidate record pairs. Without this step, I would have to compare each record of A with each record of B. How do we find these unlikely matches? A common technique is called blocking. According to a so-called blocking key, the dataset is split into blocks with similar value. Similar can mean, for example, phonetically similar, such as the names Kane, Kane and Kane, or Smith, Smith, and so on. Phonetically similar names are all classified into the same block. This can of course also be done using zip codes, city names, and so on. Blocking is done under the assumption that true matches will have at least one of these blocking keys in common. The size of the blocking keys are the trade-off between speed and accuracy. If you have large block key sizes, you have to make more comparisons. If you have smaller blocks, you might miss some matches. The question of how to choose the optimal blocking size is usually done by domain experts. This is similar to finding the optimal value for k in k-anonymity. I could make a whole video on the different types of indexing, indexing techniques, and I probably will. Next we reach the comparison step. Here you can either compare attributes exactly or approximately by measuring the similarity between two attributes. Here the difficulty lies in finding the appropriate similarity function that can represent similarity as a numeric value, typically between 0 and 1. Between two strings this could be done using qgrams, so substrings of size q, of each of the two strings you want to compare. You can count the amount of qgrams appearing in both strings and thus compute the distance between those strings. So in, this day, so in this case we have a q equals 2 and we also have exactly two q grams as m and th that are the same. The next step is classification. If we now assume that we compare it to a, a number of records, we can build similarity vectors to determine similarity between two data points. These are also called comparison vectors. These vectors are used now to classify record pairs as matches, non-matches and possible or potential matches. That depends on the concrete implementation and the model used. 
Furthermore, depending on the category of comparison, we can use thresholds, probabilities, certain rules or machine learning techniques to determine the classification. In short, you need a metric that determines whether records are classified as a match such that they can get linked. The last and final step is now evaluation. We want to know how well we did regarding efficiency and effectiveness. This is of course done during the training phases to improve the parameters for the actual real-world use cases in which you have millions of records and obviously you don't have the baseline or the exact answer. We have the usual metrics when it comes to measuring effectiveness, these are accuracy, precision and recall and of course also the F, uh, the F measure. I will not go into detail, you will prob probably find hundreds of videos on these uh, metrics on YouTube. These are commonly used in machine learning applications, for example. And that's it, that's how you do record linkage. Usually record linkage is done without any information regarding clear tags. So this is called privacy preserving record linkage or PPRL for short. You might now think that this is the ideal scenario for, for example, differential privacy. But this is unfortunately not the case, because we cannot use DP because we need microdata, which is on the individual level. And DP, of course, uh, aggregates data. But this video uh, right here is already very long, which is why we will look into privacy preserving record linkage and also legal problems that can arise during data linking in the next video. See you then and thank you very much for watching this one.